Hello, I'm Dr. Alan Dawes with the Paulding County School District, and I'm here today to tell you about the fifth to sixth grade transition in 10 minutes or less. Let's get started. So what can you expect when you transition from fifth grade to sixth grade? There are a lot of changes. First of all, the schedule. The schedule is different. You're gonna be going to different classes. You're gonna receive a schedule on paper, so you're gonna transition from one class to another in different rooms. Also, the grades are different. Gone are the individual single-digit grades from elementary. You will now see grades on a 100-point scale. So you'll see grades that look like 95 or 85 as opposed to a two. Or three. As far as lunches go, you'll, you'll take your lunch inside of a certain period. Usually second or third period is a typical lunch period in, at the middle school level. It really just depends on your school. And just know that we are here to help. We know that this is just scratching the surface of all the changes that you're going to see in this coming year. And we are here to help you. All sixth graders are new. So it's really something that you know, you just need to know that we're all kind of in this together. So let's get started looking at that schedule, okay? So as you can see on this slide, here is a sample schedule. You can see that you've got four academic periods and two connection periods. Now it's important to note that each middle school sets their own schedule. So there's gonna be some variation in here. There is a homeroom that runs about 810 to 845 with the first class starting at 8.45 and the day ending at 3.35. In addition to that, there are intervention classes that could be included inside of this schedule, but that really depends on the school. For your connection classes, we have a lot of different opportunities that vary at each school. So not every school will have, a, will have each of these on the list before you. Some will have more, some will have less, but the opportunities will vary by the school. So you can have PE, visual arts, chorus, drama. There's a lot of different things that you can look, look forward to at the middle school level, including world language such as Spanish, which we'll talk about in just a moment. For these connections classes, the schedule could vary uh, a, a great deal, really depending on the school. So. You could have a first period that's like a year-long PE class, and then your second period, your second period connection class could be split. You could have one class in the fall and one class in the spring. It really depends on the school. Otherwise, students will randomly rotate through art, computer class, uh, music. It, it really just depends, right? So if you are interested in band, students can elect to take band or chorus, but you must sign up for this. Okay, you're not going to automatically be signed up or placed in these classes. You must sign up in advance if you're interested in band or chorus. For Spanish, we do offer Spanish Connections classes in 6th grade, but this is very different from the 7th and 8th grade Spanish that I'm going to tell you about in here in just a moment. 6th grade Spanish is really just an introduction, whereas 7th and 8th grade Spanish is getting into a high school credit course. So that kind of brings me into advanced courses offered in sixth grade. Very different from your elementary experience with Venture or perhaps Target if you came from another county. In sixth grade, there are advanced classes that are taught in the four core areas, language arts, math, science, and social studies. How are you selected to get into these classes? Really, the elementary school is driving that ship. So the elementary school will provide the middle school with placement for advanced classes, and then the they use a combination of teacher recommendations and your academic records to decide whether or not you're going to be placed into advanced courses. They consider things like attendance, your homework completion, your participation, and of course your study habits. The content in these advanced courses is significantly different. Okay? This is much more rigorous in nature and the pace and the processing skill, the student expectations, they are all higher. So please make sure that you are aware of that if you're interested in taking advanced coursework in sixth grade. 
As far as seventh and eighth grade goes, I know we're primarily focused on sixth grade uh, right here, but I want to give you just kind of an overview of seventh and eighth grade. You could take additional advanced classes in seventh and eighth grade. Spanish in seventh and eighth grade counts as a high school credit course. Now, there may be requirements just to get into this, so just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, so half of, se half of uh, Spanish 1 is taken in 7th grade, and the other half of Spanish 1 is taken in 8th grade, and those are going to be high school credit courses that count towards your graduation and count towards your high school GPA. In 8th grade, you can take advanced classes that, that also will give you high school credit. You can take Honors Ninth Lit, Honors, or excuse me, Honors Enhanced Algebra, or Honors Physical Science. Each of those will give you a high school credit. It will count towards your high school GPA and high school graduation. It will not count towards your high school HOPE GPA for the HOPE Scholarship, okay? Advanced math is a little bit different in eighth grade where we consider it enhanced, meaning this is all of on-level math plus algebra. So it's basically two classes into one, okay? For school discipline, very different from elementary school, okay? Teachers set high expectations for students to do well, and administrators are there to help the students understand what happens when we have to issue consequences, okay? And we will issue consequences that is consistent with whatever was done inside or outside of the classroom, right? There is a dress code. There is a dress code. It is enforced. So please make sure you know the dress code and that you are following those rules. And finally, for consequences, very different from elementary school. At the middle school level and even into the high school level, we issue different discipline consequences that could include timeout or what we would call period ISS, where you have in-school suspension or ISS for just a period of time. You could have detention. You could have ISS, in-school suspension, for a full day or more, or you could have out-of-school suspension. It is possible, but hopefully none of you out there are going to be going to be needing that, right? We're going to follow the rules. We're going to do what our teachers and our administrators ask, ask us to do and hopefully have a great middle school experience. What are some other differences? You get more responsibility, a lot more personal responsibility in middle school. You have more freedom, so therefore you have higher expectations, right? So you should try to get organized, study more, and make sure you have a good grasp on what's going on both academically and behaviorally. So with these high expectations, we need to watch our school discipline, our dress code, and our attendance. Some schools will also have lockers. That's a, that's a little bit of a difference. Some schools will not though. As far as laptops, you will, you will be issued a laptop, each of you, so you've got to be responsible in taking care of that. And also a difference at the middle school level is there are different club options. I would encourage you to get involved, and these vary by school, whether it's academic bowl, yearbook club, et cetera. Again, they vary by school. Finally, I'd like to give you 11 ways to support your student transitioning to middle school. These 11 will help guide you through not just this transition, but all of sixth through the eighth grade experience. Number one, encourage them to get organized. Please get organized because there is a lot of different classes to keep up with. Number two, monitor social media and phones if you have them. Number three, encourage them to get involved. Involved students are more successful. Number four, parents, we need you to be involved. I know you're very involved at the elementary level, don't give up now. We need you to be involved. Five, have them try to solve their own problems first. Six, encourage good hygiene. That's important. Seven, monitor their grades using parent portal. Eight, check their homework, but don't do it for them. Nine, contact their teachers if you have questions and give them time to respond. Remember, they are teaching, so you know a 24-hour time frame, that's, that's a good reasonable amount of time. Know that this can be a difficult age for your student, it's number 10. And if your child is struggling, reach out to your school counselor. That's, that's our top 11 list. 
I appreciate your time. You have a great day.